Playing Pokemon, one might be led to believe that gym leaders and elite four are chosen through a meritocracy, much like the generals of the glorious Mongolian Empire. But one man alone shatters this illusion and reframes the entire world of Pokemon to be one dictated not by skill or ability, but by connections and corruption. This expose is not just going to answer the question of how such a trash trainer managed to rise to the ranks of Gen 1's poison type gym leader. No, 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 no. It's going to dive into the dirty underbelly of the bureaucracy of Kanto and Johto and investigate what sort of system exists that would let such an amoral figure represent it. At first glance, Koga might seem like a regular bad gym leader, but a deeper, further analysis will uncover that this is not just a regular bad trainer, but the worst gym leader in the entire series. I analyzed all the gym leaders' team compositions of red and blue in an 80 minute deep dive, and spoilers, Koga's is the worst. If you're interested in that analysis, then you can check it out. Also, while you're at it, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel to get more of this hard hitting content. So what makes his team so bad? Well, to quickly summarize, he has two coughings, a wheezing, and a muck. It takes no genius to recognize that having three Pokemon from the same line is a top tier dropkick move. But this is so much worse when you consider that coughings evolve at level 35 and his are at level 37. More so, Koga's last Pokemon Weezing has self-destruct, and he will consistently use it to finish battles. Not battles that he is going to win or even draw. Nope, just a simple suicide play out of the match. Because Koga is pure incompetence, and I'm unsure if he even knows how a Pokemon battle works. This also gives us a sneak peek into Koga's more violent villainous side, but let's leave that for later. If you're thinking his team isn't too bad, let's go through some of the other options available. Arbok, Golbat, Beedrill, Venomoth, Tentacle, Vileplume, Victory Bell, Venusaur, Nidoking, Nidoqueen, and Gengar. A slew of good Pokemon with a couple legitimately great ones. And this man went, nah, 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 fuck all that noise. Give me a wheezing and two coughings that I won't even fucking evolve. But down from the heavens comes hope, because Pokemon Yellow rolls around and with it a shakeup of most gym leaders' teams. And blessed be the meek, because the worst team of all gets a complete revamp. Now, while some teams are improved in the switch up, a few got worse. Erica's Victory Bell and Vileplume become Weeping Bell and Gloom, and Lieutenant Surge just straight kicks two members of his squad, and instead rides solo with a single Raichu, a brain dead gym leader play. But at least that reflects the legendary Raichu vs Pikachu battle from the show. Koga sees this and simply refuses to be outdone. Already hosting the worst team, Koga steps up to the plate and delivers a masterclass in ineptitude. He sensed the chance for a few bumps to form within his brain and made the radical maneuver to ensure his mind stayed the smoothest of vacuous oceans. I mean, this man has the absolute gall, the audacity to call himself a gym leader, then turns up with a team of Venomoth, Venonat, Venonat, and a goddamn third Venonat. Koga's not fucking around anymore. He could feel the worst gym leader team of all time award drifting away, and he shore that shit up, got his team aligned, and picked up the big dub. Why have two unnecessarily unevolved Pokemon when you could have an almighty three? And why fuck around with trying to remember two different evolutionary lines when you can roll four deep of the same shit? A Hall of Fame thick skull performance. Now you may be wondering, damn, this man's cavernous cranium knows no bounds. What is he gonna pull out for the gym battles that can be done in generation two when you can head to Kanto after becoming the Johto champion? Here's the thing, he's no longer the gym leader. He's been removed from the role. Justice, finally. For too long, the world let this infantile dickwad run a prestigious Pokemon Institute without repercussion. So what happened to dear old simple-minded Koga? He got motherfucking promoted to the Johto Elite Four. How the fuck is an absolute dreg of a dude like Koga, a person that rolls deep with three Venonat and a Venomoth getting promoted to the Elite Four? What system would allow for such a move and who replaces Koga at his gym? Let's start with the last question. Who replaces Koga? Is it a newly promoted trainer that gets there through merit? Of course not. It's a person of Koga's own choosing, his daughter. The cracks of the meritocracy are appearing as nepotism sinks in. But before we dive into these hard-hitting questions, 
let's discuss the man himself. At this point, you may thinking I've been too harsh on Senor Melon Skull. But no, let's look at the type of fiend Koga is. Because he's not some quiet, sensitive soul who's in over his head. He is a vicious, callous, insecure puppet whose success is only granted because of his ties to criminality and his revelry in the most sinister of sins. Off the rip, this is how Koga starts his first ever interaction with the player. Fwahaha! A mere child like you dares to challenge me? Very well, I shall show you the terror as a ninja master. You shall feel the despair of poison and sleep techniques. That's how this guy talks to a child. A sicko who wants to cause despair. Despair to a child. No true ninja master would ever be concerned or feel threatened by a child. They'd welcome the challenge and mentor the kid, win or lose. But Koga's no ninja master, he's a fool in a costume, and despite his bravado, he's a pushover, a joke, his team is tragic, and his gym is a farce. You see, Koga can't even get the trainers of his gym to have the Pokemon of his gym's type, Poison. Instead, it's filled with Pokemon that are super effective against him. Most of the gym is psychic and ground types. And why not? Why respect this man? Why would the employees at his gym give a fuck about Koga as a trainer? He's a joke. And this is coming from a bunch of jugglers and whip enthusiasts. Easily two of the sussiest demographics out there. But let's wave goodbye to the games for now and touch our toes into the manga, because despite being scant in appearance, his presence is filled with malice. The first time this dude turns up, he is forcing his Rhyhorn to evolve by ejecting it with PEDs. Not surprising, because we all know he's a trash trainer who struggles to evolve his Pokemon in any other way. Next, we see him getting his Ghastly to reanimate the corpses of dead Pokemon, the first sign that Koga might have a proclivity to corpse creation. This is backed up by his next appearance, where his thirst for corpse creation leads him to almost killing himself and Blue after losing a battle in Sylphco. Koga is such a loose unit that he would murder suicide a child. Now, Koga's got some good qualities, right? I mean, the game says he patrols the Safari Zone, the heavily secluded and dangerous area of the map to protect visitors from wild animals. But the only animal they need protection from is Koga himself. What is he doing there? Stalking new prey to satisfy his sick tendencies? Highly likely, but it's debatable. What isn't debatable is the fact that he's there, burying the many corpses provided by his boss, which is, shock and horror, Giovanni. Of course, Koga is a Team Rocket executive, a stooge, a high-level foot soldier in the army of the Mafia. And let's be real, he's only there because he catches bodies, and that's an asset to those of the criminal underground, especially when you have access to the juiciest burial ground in all of Kanto, the Safari Zone. It is referenced time and time again that Koga loves to disorient his opponents, confuse them, poison them, and put them to sleep. Not their Pokémon, them. I live in the shadows, a ninja. My intricate style will confound and destroy you. Confusion, sleep, poison. Prepare to be the victim of my sinister technique. Now, it's a children's game, but these are easy lines to read between. This is not sleep we're talking about. This is a darker truth, a darker existence, a darker destiny. Death. Koga is a walking Grim Reaper, stalking his prey across the Kanto and Johto regions, serving the real leader of Team Rocket, the Masked Man. Koga even follows him to the Johto region during the reignition of this crime family. But with all of this, the question still lingers. How did Koga become a member of the Elite Four? Surely not through skill, surely not through his Pokemon battling abilities, it's simply not possible. Think about it, the Masked Man and Team Rocket flee to Johto, and all of a sudden, a spot just happens to open up on the Elite Four? No. A hero has been ripped from this world, confused, poisoned, asleep, all at the hands of the most vicious and psychotic individual the Pokemon world has ever seen. Now, unless we are to believe the Elite Four works of an Orc-style military 1v1 hierarchy system, then just because Koga added another victory to his personal cemetery doesn't mean that he should be chosen for the Elite Four. So why was this man picked? How much power does the Masked Man have? How many Pokemon officials are in league with the criminal underbelly of these lands? This is where we start to see a much darker side of Pokemon bureaucracy, a system which we are led to believe is a meritocracy, a game which supposedly 
supposedly lives by the motto, I want to be the very best, should really be, you can murder your way to the top. Unfortunately, I cannot answer exactly how Koga was able to become a member of the Elite Four despite having no discernible Pokemon battling ability. Can we definitively say that the Masked Man asked Koga to kill the previous member of the Elite Four, then used his connections to secure that spot for Koga, allowing Team Rocket to have the greatest murder weapon puppet available close by as they try to rekindle their criminal organization in Johto? Absolutely, the truth is clear as day, but can we say who else was involved? Which members of the Pokemon Association, the governing board that chooses gym leaders and Elite Four members, are gang affiliated? How many corrupt officials are there in the Pokemon world? By my conservative estimate, millions. Chilling and correct. The world of Pokemon seems beautiful and idyllic, but the reality is it's built upon a corrupt bureaucracy that is in league with organized crime and murderers. Koga is just one man, but he stands as the poster child for the villainy which seeps its way into the fabric of Pokemon society. A man who seems unable to grasp the concept of creating a Pokemon team, let alone battling with it. A man whose violent and masochistic nature led him to getting favor and power with the region's worst criminals. But such a simple man that he was used as a puppet, put into places of higher power power to do these ne'er-do-wells bidding, with them never fearing that he'd be able to overthrow them himself. But most hauntingly, a man who still lingers out there in the wild, a man embedded with the heights of the Pokemon Elite, forever surviving, forever scoping for his next target, forever casting a dark shadow on the world we know and love. Thank you for watching my serious video on this very serious topic. If you enjoyed the video, then fang it a like for some more hard-hitting, top-quality, rapturous journalism. And subscribe to the channel for more.